Hi, I'm Tom Ray, and this is my art podcast. I wanted to take a second to ask you a favor. If you're enjoying this episode, please remember to subscribe to it on whatever podcast app you're using, or leave a review if you can. Any little bit helps. Also, if you'd like, you could go to my website at tomraiswebsite.com and sign up for the email list, and you'll get information about each artist that I talk to, and you'll get alerts as to when different episodes are coming out. Plus, you'll also get a call out when I'm looking for artists to schedule interviews on the show. So go to TomRay'sWebsite.com and subscribe to the show there. And also, thank you so much for listening. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom, and on today's episode, I talked to an artist here in Madison who actually became an artist because they started doing live streams. They started reaching out to people during the pandemic, during the shutdown, or as I refer to it, as you see in the video, I call it the sickness. Uh, they, they started reaching out to people on TikTok and finding other people that were having kind of the same issues that they were. They started out just really doing a mental health check online. And that evolved into asking people to send them pictures of their pets and send them pictures of themselves so they could paint them so they could draw them so they could do more live streaming artwork and that's how they create their artwork they actually do all of their artwork live on video on different platforms it's a great conversation and i'm really glad i got to meet the person so here's the interview starting right now i'm dg and i'm a portrait artist and content creator hi how are you today? <laughs> oh, I'm so excellent. I finally did my laundry and cleaned and got all my business stuff situated. You know, like December is that month for artists who especially vend. And I did that this year where we go kind of crazy and yeah. then we can relax. So I see the end of the, the fiscal year and the tunnel. It's coming. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I just realized I never, I, I usually just... Most people don't say, how are you doing? And, and I don't have a response for that. I'm good. I'm talking to you. This is a fun time. <laughs> I just love being out there and talking to people again. I had to take a break for a little while uh, because I got, I got what I just like to call the sickness because I don't like saying the word on video uh, because of, <laughs> cause you never know how it's going to get flagged just accidentally. And mm -hmm. then uh, my scheduling got messed up. But now I'm back in the flow of things, so I'm happy to be out there meeting people. Um, and you are based here in Madison, correct? I am. I am. Um, and uh, during that time period when we were all with the sickness yeah. or trying to not get the sickness, uh, that's when I started painting. And before that, I, I didn't. So this get is all here. I, I didn't even like. Yeah, actually, I was a middle school teacher. I'll tell you my little origin story. Do it. No, right now I'm intrigued and I'm just basically going to ask you, please tell me more. So please tell me yeah. more. Um, so I was a middle school teacher here in Madison, Wisconsin. What middle and, school? Um, Jefferson Middle School okay. on the West Side. Okay. Yeah, it was a very interesting time when I was there uh, as a brand new teacher. We went through five new administrators, like rounds of them, you know, principal and vice principal coming in and out. Yeah. And so it was just like a very challenging way to run a school, you know, when there's no solid leadership team. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was really distressful. But then the illness, the sickness happened, right? Yeah. And we were all basically in our rooms just like this right except mm -hmm. there was a bed behind us and it was not set up to be a zoom situation with kids right and during that time I found out that I couldn't handle it <laughs> I, couldn't, <laughs> I, I couldn't handle getting up sitting down at a chair and turning on a computer and that was my job with students like it just wasn't right um and I found out why I found out that I have bipolar disorder oh. so, and I didn't know until we were forced to sit down and sit with ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so when that happened, I had a psychotic episode while I was teaching on zoom. And, um, it, it was one of those things where I was extremely paranoid and I just, it, everything inside me was not reflecting what was going on outside. And so, 
uh, I took a leave of absence because I thought if I want to be the best teacher and be the best community member for these kids and these families who I was uh, tasked to teach, I need to take a break. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important that children are also told and shown that even adults need to take a break. The people who you think are together, like, you know, and have their lives right, sometimes they need a break and that's okay. Um, So I took a little medical leave of absence And uh, around that time, it was 2020, my students had already told me like, you should get on TikTok, you should get on TikTok. And they were all like doing their dances and stuff. And and I was just like, I don't know about that, but I'll I'll look. So I downloaded TikTok. I I came up with a username because I was like, well, it's not going to be my name. I don't know what to do. So we use our alliterations to our mnemonics, you know, to remember Mm -hmm. things. And green goodies was just a really easy thing to remember. And there was nothing else out there. Like I didn't see anything on TikTok or on Instagram quite the same. Mm -hmm. And so I took the username and, uh, but at the same time I was a teacher, right? So I did not want people to go online and find me, find where I work. Which is the the concept of going on TikTok is you want people to go online and find you. Right. It's very (laughs) different. But I also thought like, let's just, I kind of, I've always been, we live in Madison. It's a very like disruptive town if we're talking about like politics. Um, And so I kind of decided I wanted to create something that I didn't see, right? Something that was a little bit different. And so I started uh, just being a person and living my life and hanging out with people on TikTok and chatting. But all these people, and I started to become very viral because I I had lost a lot of weight. I had transitioned from being someone who the doctor considered obese to somebody who was um, malnourished and very skinny and small. So I lost 75 pounds in like a very short amount of time. And this is during the shutdown, you're saying? Uh, like leading up to, and then definitely during the shutdown, it was okay. even more intense. Um, cause we were just sitting in our rooms, like ruminating on things. And so, and when I was having a psychotic episode, I was also very much ruminating on food and ruminating on nutrition and preventative care and wellness, okay. um, because I was like, grabbing for wellness and like wanting that right that was the thing that I think we all really were were more interested in at that time than probably previously mm-hmm. um and so I I started giving my clothes away my mom actually I live with my mother you know Madison is very expensive so if yeah. you get along with somebody and you can live with them yes and you just happen um, to get along with your mother <laughs> I know right and she's so kind and caring but she does the mother things still you know and so she did the oh, thing yeah. with the mother thing where she's like you should clean out your closet like get rid of all that stuff and it's true every time I opened up the closet I saw all these clothes that I had great memories and great experiences with and I no longer could mm-hmm. you know they're super baggy and saggy. I don't know if you've ever experienced extreme weight changes and shifts, but I have, it, it was over time, but uh, it, in the past, uh, I would say maybe back in 2015, I had lost like 40 pounds. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's a very intense physical and psychological shift that occurs, uh, between like you and your clothes. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I ended up going on TikTok and saying, hey, does anyone want some clothes? I have large, extra large, double XL sizes, like 10, 12, 14, 16 pants and stuff. And women's clothes are just terrible. Like <laughs> they're hard to shop for and even harder to maintain, it seems like. Yeah. So I was just trying to give them away. And so people started. You sell them. You were just giving them away. Yes. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, and think about it. I was on a salary at that point in time because I was a teacher. So I was like, well, I don't need extra income to survive. Mm. Like I thought probably could have used extra income, but not to survive. Yeah. And I just knew that I needed to do something uh, that helped other people, but also knowing about some 
Some people don't have access to a thrift store or a secondhand clothing store. And some of our secondhand clothing stores um, have policies and structures that I personally just don't agree with. Okay. Um, like, yeah, and I don't I don't need to go into detail about that now. But uh, so if you can donate to local places or to domestic violence shelters or to like homeless shelters directly, those are really great ways to do it. But I didn't have that ability at the time. So I just reached out and I asked people, hey, can because all the shelters had stopped taking clothes because they were afraid of viruses coming mm. in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that was why. And there are so many people who either live in rural communities or they gained or they lost a lot of weight during that time period, 2020 and 2021, mm -hmm. and didn't have the income to be able to go out and just buy a new wardrobe. So that's how that really began. And then I would sit and we would talk about the real challenges of living with mental illness. You and, and the other TikTokers you're saying. Yeah, people who just came on TikTok to, you know, to scroll or to hang out. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about those things and talking about um, how fashion is so hard for you to maintain and enjoy as a curvy or a woman. Yeah. Um, and so that, that was like a, a bunch of it. So we started a community, you know, and we just sat and we talked and hung out and related to one another and people would come on and talk about their relationships or they talk about school or the, you know, whatever the things are yeah. and we just connected. And so during that time in 2020, I was really trying to find healing from my bipolar disorder and like trying to alleviate a lot of those symptoms. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so the people who came on and hung out with me, we kind of like collaborated and talked about ways that we can support each other. And then everyone needs an extreme couponing friend, like, <laughs> you know, like it's a random thing, but yeah. you need a friend who is extremely frugal just for fun. You know, okay. it doesn't matter if they're like have money or not. So I have one and her name is Mariah. She's a professor in Stevens at UW Stevens Point. And I had met her when we went to college together. She's an amazing person. Uh, but she recommended, she just like sent me this app, a coupon app. And she was like, hey, if you spend X amount of dollars, we both get X amount of dollars. And I was oh, like, yeah. cool. you know, why right. not? So I did it. And the only, I was like scrolling through the places you could shop and it was a bunch of clothing places. And at that time I was like, I don't know my size. I don't try things on. I have right. no idea. That was not it. So I, I do not to... care for doing that online. I, it, yeah, it's, it never, whenever it arrives, I'm like, I know it's not going to fit. I need to try it on in person. It's just, yeah. especially pants. I just, I've been shopping for like a month for pants. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope you find them. It's, it's... Oh, I did. I finally did like a week ago. Finally. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> so yeah, so we did that. And then I ended up finding that Michael's craft store, the like art supply store yeah. hat was listed. And so I just bought a couple of craft supplies. Okay. Um, Cause I had heard that art is healing. Right? Yeah. What kind of craft supplies um, did you end up buying? I got like the really cheap bottles of acrylic paint and like super cheap canvases. And I just, a couple of little, like really, I think the, this was like one of them, but like a really cheap set of brushes, like just really okay. cheap and affordable things. And I think I probably spent like 35 or $40, you know, nothing crazy. No, yeah. And then on March 1st, I just brought all the stuff out. And of course we were live streaming. <laughs> so I was live streaming on TikTok. No, see, you say, of course we were live streaming. Now that's okay. There's a big jump there. So you were doing, you went and bought I, a bunch of craft stuff and then you were live streaming. So building up to that, you're like, I'm going to do my very first painting on live streaming or how did that come about? Well, cause we were live streaming the journey of finding healing. Okay. Right? Okay. From bipolar disorder. And um, and so everything that I did, I would like make videos and document and live stream and talk about. So I tried uh, Chinese acupuncture therapy. I tried Japanese, um, the freedom tapping therapy, which I'm is amazing. With that one. Okay. Yeah. yeah you, um, you tap pressure points on your body. And as you do that, you say 
uh, affirming statements about like, although I have this, for me, it was bipolar disorder, Mm -hmm. I am whole, right? I am, and something that has to do with like you being complete and being enough. Yeah. Um, And you just tap yourself and you keep reminding yourself and there's different points you do. And I would live stream and people would do it with me and say that they'd, we'd write down our own little message for ourselves and say it and do it. Mm-hmm. And it's something that was really positive, but it wasn't very, um, I wasn't drawn naturally to do it, you know, so it wasn't a habit I could maintain. So then we found more things that we could do. And eventually, like, I refused medication. Um I tried it for a month and had really negative side effects with that. So I decided that I would just avoid any medications for bipolar disorder and instead be on this journey for healing. So um, as we did it, then we started painting. And so I was live streaming, right? Mm -hmm. And I asked my audience, hey, does anyone have a pet that I could paint? Because I didn't know what to paint. And I was just like, we just have to do it. We just have to try it. Yeah. So I'll I'll show you. I have it right here. March 2021. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. So that was our very first one. Someone sent me their pug and I painted it and people really enjoyed the process of doing it. And I made some TikTok videos and posted them. And so um, we were just lonely right? Mm -hmm. We were so lonely. And loneliness is something that you can't touch it and hold it and get rid of it. There's no pills that can fix it. It's not something that everyone even has the words to describe, you Mm -hmm. know? And so during that time period, when I was able to live stream paint, we were talking, painting, and hanging out. And this was like, this was where people were, you know, dancing on TikTok right. originally. And so now we transform TikTok from being just a, a sit and get like scroll type of thing to a we're together. Yeah. We're doing this together. And whatever your issues are, whatever your celebrations are, we're going to do it together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that was something that a lot of us really needed. And a few questions of, of, First of all, I don't know why I couldn't get that sentence out. Uh, a few questions. Uh, one, was this before TikTok had the to do live streams? Like now you have to have like 100 followers before you can live stream. So were you able to live stream right away? This is just technical question first. Oh, because oh, remember, no, I wasn't. Remember okay. when um, Remember when I said that I gave my clothes away online? Yeah. So I posted one video, just one video of my closet that was jammed exactly that door right there. Okay. And it was jam packed of clothes, like stuffed. You could not get a hanger offer on. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Cause uh, I was adopted when I was five. And when you are, I grew up in foster care up until that point. And so when you are like repeatedly removed from a home, and you have to leave all the things there that you had before, mm-hmm. you get this feeling that things are important. <laughs> mm, okay. Right? And yeah. so I had this idea that like keeping all these things was important. But then during uh, during the time period of 2020 and 2021, I realized what's really important. Okay. It's not things. And right? so when you were doing that, you're saying a lot of people suddenly reached out and then you had made just a lot of followers that yeah. way? Okay. Well, that video, that one video went viral. I think my mom and I were here in the house and we had to go like run errands. And oh, I it's think one of those things. And then you came back and it's like, it was blowing up. <laughs> Within 45 minutes, the video had over a hundred thousand views. It is one of those platforms where I am surprised by, you can check back five minutes later and suddenly you have hundreds of views. It's yeah, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, a, it, that is an amazing part of it for sure. So I think by the, I was overwhelmed I was just sitting there like okay well I guess <laughs> I have to do it now you know like now I have the opportunity to give people something so I kept on making content and videos and I curated outfits so then people wanted the clothes yeah. so of course they hung out for that but then people really stuck around because I actually cared about them okay. because I actually you know committed to talking to people and a lot of people would hang out with me on a live stream and I would remember them. 
And the next time they came back, I would remember them. And I don't think that everybody who live streams has that capability. It was that teacher brain, okay? Right. Teacher, yeah, no, you're think, used to being in front of people and interacting with them. That helps for sure. That That but, is one of the biggest uh, hurdles for sure is, yeah, is exactly. doing that. And uh, so, it, okay, yeah, go ahead. Oh, so, so I did all of that and I was really comfortable in front of people. I brought my teacher brain. And also in case there are teachers listening, I just want to tell you that you are so important. The work that you do is something that can't be done by everybody and it and you deserve a break right and and you deserve to have all of the uh all of the all the love right because yeah. we need our teachers to be well in order for our kids to be well and if our kids aren't doing well our country isn't doing well you know, our whole planet isn't doing well when our kids aren't doing well. So it's our teachers who we really, really need to continue supporting and parents continue supporting and loving, even if we ourselves cannot be the ones in the classroom doing the work. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. So well, oh, go ahead. And what I wanted to ask you, the second thing I wanted to ask you was, so before this, you painted that amazing dog picture and- <laughs> Was your, I mean, had you not painted ever before this really was the first time you started painting or had you actually done it in the past? Like, what is your artistic background? Um, yeah, the, my background is I, I went to university at UW Stevens Point, okay. University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, and I originally went in for, um, I was such a conflicted person and Anybody else who's like thinking about college or is in college and you're so conflicted in what you should do, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You like <laughs> all the things that you try along the way will benefit you in the long run is what I've decided as, and I, I literally, I literally am experiencing it. Yeah. Um, I started out with an interior architecture major in college and I decided that I wasn't really interested in, um, fraternizing with the other people who were in that program <laughs> and i decided that i would rather feel good about myself and the people who i'm working with um than make tons of money okay and so i i was friends with all these people who were in education majors and and they were just like full of life and joy and possibility and hope and I think that's really required of teachers, right? Right. That attitude. And you are so, molding minds, yes. <laughs> exactly, right? Against all the challenges, you do amazing things. And so I ended up just gravitating towards those people and being like, okay, I need to find something in education to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I, I loved history. I loved storytelling. I love connecting to people, not only like now, you know, but also being able to connect to ourselves historically and an ancestrally and in the future, you know, like thinking about what are the things that I want to do based on my understanding of all the things that have already happened mm -hmm. to continue this human story. Okay. And then how did that lead to painting though? Um, like, had you done it beforehand? Were there drawings that you had done? No, Anything? See, no, this is, this is one of those things. Okay. So you make that amazing dog painting and you're like, I've never really done it before. And it's like, damn no. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing, right? Yeah. Um, when people experience a lot of trauma as a young person, uh -huh. um, they often become people pleasers. And as it was a survival tactic of a person who was in foster care that what other people want is what you should do. Um, and so my friends weren't into art. Nobody really in my school that I hung out with was into art. And so I would go gallivant with them and do things that they wanted to do rather than probably the things that I was probably more interested in actually doing. Yeah. So you're so, saying you did always have an interest in art. It's just that it was you weren't surrounded by it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I don't know anybody who, who really is just like, I hate art, you know, like, I hate <laughs> <everything>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Darn so, drawings everywhere. <laughs> exactly. But um, I like the idea that we could use art as a vehicle, you know, for change, and that we can use art as a vehicle for healing and growth and community and connection. 
And it was a lot of the things that I was already doing with education with my middle school students and the faculty were things that we could translate into something else that mm -hmm. could inspire people to be the humans that they want to be. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. when you did the dog painting, the, the pug that you had done, uh, how did it progress from there? How did it become something that you started doing regularly? Or like, where did you, did you just continue to do it on TikTok? How did it progress? I did like every day. Okay. Um, because I just, doing something one time is great, but if you can do it repeatedly and repeatedly, it, it becomes something even more, something magical. Yeah. And at the same time, like we were stuck at home, we couldn't leave, all of that. And um, I I have kind of obsessive tendencies. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's okay. It's all right. Yeah. Um, and so I use that to my advantage. And it was a really great way to not always be the focus of a video or of a live stream and allow other people's stories or other people's um, interpretations to kind of be there and take precedence. Okay. Um, but... The Garden of a Thousand Faces is the big project that I'm working on and a lot of people know about. And that one, it became because we were painting a lot of people's animals. And then um, a man hired me. He commissioned me to paint his family. And I had never, I was scared. I was so scared to paint people because it's like, they're going to judge you, but they don't. It's okay. <laughs> and so, <laughs> right. And so it's kind of like, uh, it naturally just built upon itself. And then during the pandem pandemic, no, that's all right. Uh, you could say it. I just say <laughs> that I, 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 I'm so tired of saying pandemic that, <laughs> you know, oh, or even I saying know. COVID that's why I'm just like the sickness, you know? But uh, yeah, but <laughs> during that time period, I felt like, um, it was kind of a, I'm a, I'm a history buff nerd. Okay. I'm not very good with dates, but I'm good with other things. So I was looking at the Spanish influenza. I was looking at how did the the whole United States kind of come together after World War or well, the Great Depression, right? Mm -hmm. um, when we hit that. And there was this great amount of um, federally funded art projects that were specifically documenting things like the folklore and music of um, like the Okies in the South and of all these people who moved out to California. And I thought, you know, we need to document people's stories of their relationship during the pandemic and what happened to them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I thought that might bring us really close together, but then Another idea just occurred and it was like, you know, what if I just document one person becoming the best version of themselves that they can possibly be and invite everybody into it Okay. and, and, and just ask them a very simple question because people don't always have time or energy to listen to anything more. Right. Um, and that's just, can I paint you? And Simple. you came up with this idea. And yep. how did, how did people contact you about it? Or what was the, how did they reach out? Were you doing polls? I mean, how were you going about finding these people and asking these questions? Um, so I was using TikTok and okay. I did the first one, I think I was live streaming and I just asked my audience, I was like, you know, uh, we've, we've painted enough pets and I want to paint people, but I don't want to paint Pinterest models or famous people yeah. or Honestly, all I didn't know at the time, but also didn't want to have to deal with issues with copyright infringement from right. like photographers and other people. So I asked people if they wanted to be painted. Okay. And it was also a way to share some like focused attention to somebody else and a lot of care and time on somebody who maybe felt alone or needed just a little, you know, wanted to see themselves in another way and spend time together. So somebody said, yeah, and this was the first one. Oh, nice. So I can take it out of the plastic. Okay. So that was my very first one. And like, it's not very like anatomically uh, specific and detailed and it's very abstracted. And I was, like I said, I was, I, I was scared to paint people. Mm-hmm the skin colors that they were, the hair colors that they were. 
And this was all also during a time when like being yourself was like, we want to do that. But at the same time, people were so scared that they were going to say or do something wrong. And then a riot would come out, you know, like stuff like that. And like, we're all learning. We're all learning constantly how to be a human and how to get along with other humans and how to navigate this world. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I'm learning and I invite people to also learn with me. And it's not just about painting, but it's about how do I honor you? How do I respect you? How do I uh, include you if you want to be Mm -hmm. Um, in all those types of ways? And so the, the, the isolation of the pandemic for most of us has been alleviated, but a lot of the loneliness is still there. Oh, yeah. Right. And so this project is about revealing ourselves as well. And I talked about how I lost a lot of weight, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I gained a lot of that weight from college. You know how they said like the college 15, freshman 15? I had gained like 80 pounds my first year, you know, and then it just continued. It didn't stop. Mm -hmm. I just kept gaining weight during college. I going crazy working myself for that degree. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was in school for seven years. So that's like seven years of snacks and in between classes and stuff and like scrounging for food. Uh, And so I didn't have any pictures of myself that didn't have a filter on them from college. Hmm. Every image that I took with my friends or whatever, you know, like there was some type of a filter on it from a Snapchat image or whatever. And it wasn't me. It wasn't real. It wasn't authentic. Mm -hmm. And I also thought how many other people out there have camera rolls full of great memories that have been tarnished by filters. (gasps) (laughs) So when people look through their photos and they want to join me in this mission of painting a thousand faces, um, they have to look through their camera roll and decide, do I have any pictures that are unfiltered? That is one of the questions you're saying you asked them about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you have to authentically come as yourself. You can wear makeup if that's who you are and what you do, you know, you can do whatever artistic style of photography for yourself, as long as you're the one taking the picture or you own the rights to it. I now get the bio that you have in your Instagram. I was, I was wondering about that. There's one line that says no filters. And I didn't realize that it was connected to the line above it, which is submit your photos. Okay. All right. That makes more sense now. I got it. And there's also another thing, like in the United States, people filter themselves for the public and actually have very different personalities and thoughts behind closed doors. And also more so like we have to be authentically ourselves at all times. Otherwise, you're just like wearing clown makeup. Like, you know, it's not and it, it makes people unsafe. If you're walking around with one idea and you actually think another Uh, People don't have a real idea of who you are and what they can be comfortable with sharing around you. Okay. And how long have you been working on this project now? Um, It started, I wrote it down, June of 2021. Oh, wow. Okay. And how many have you done so far? 185. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they've gotten more intense. And the first one, right, it only took like three hours to paint the first one. And the, all of them are completely live streamed. So the whole oh, time. They are. Okay. Yeah. Every, almost every single painting that I have ever painted has been done on a live stream. All right. Mm-hmm. And I am prolific in painting. So what? all of these are part of the garden. And uh, I have even more that I have boxed and stored and I've got them all uh, labeled. So I know exactly where it is and exactly where to find it. You're saying those ones behind you in the uh, next to the door. Yeah, all of these right oh, here. Wow. Are part it of has the changed thing. quite a bit since that first one that you showed me. Amazing. It has. And I have another one right here as well. So like, okay. A lot of detail and a lot of depth has been developed. And one of my goals with the Garden of a Thousand Faces is to to study other artists, not just the ones who we learn about in school or Mm -hmm. like have books made about them, um, but also contemporary artists and people who are especially like black and brown artists, um, different minority groups. 
and especially women. So I've been doing a lot more research. And as I go, we're using different styles and fin finding out where do I fit in as an artist? Where is my style uh, in this kind of grand scheme of things? Mm -hmm. And pushing a lot of these little um, techniques and color choices and things like that in order to tell this really grand story of who are we. Okay. And on top of this, you say you're doing these all as live streams. Now, what was the learning curve? I really want to get to the technical questions here because you're, I guess the only way I can describe it is your video game is on point. I mean, it is, you have, <laughs> you make great videos. And Thank you. I, I really, really do love them. I've been so impressed ever since I, uh, ever since I first saw your stuff. Um, oh, thank you. I, and I want to know, as far as doing those videos, how has that evolved? How did you overcome technical capabilities or did you even have any technical capabilities that you had to overcome? I think the universe sent me a lot of uh, everything kind of just naturally built upon itself. I'm self-taught. I self I self-taught editing and filming okay. and painting and connecting, like all the things. Yeah. Um, and... So I, I had this phone and I broke it. It dropped. <laughs> okay. and, right? Like as one does, you can see it. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Like it's pretty awful. Nice. And so that was an opportunity to go get a second phone, which we now know there are some issues morally with phones and how we get the materials that make them work, right? Mm -hmm. There's issues like the slavery in the Congo with cobalt, which is a very important tool. Um, but I went out and got another phone at that time. And so now then I had one phone that was live streaming the content that we were creating. Uh, and then I had a, a functioning phone <laughs> that I could make the content with as okay. well. So it took more devices than just one. And um, like it got a little intense, I will say, because I have at this point, uh, what's the number? Over 14,000 photo submissions. Nice. Just of people who want to be painted into the project um, by me and to see themselves as a painting. Um, but I you got to look through all of them because some people don't, um, they don't take time to read the instructions that say like six times, no filters, no filters, no filters. And you got to put I, it in there a seventh time and then you'll be set. <laughs> right, right. I don't know what would help. You know, it, it's okay. And so, you're a teacher, uh, you understand nobody reads the directions. <laughs> I'm one of those people too. Okay, oh, I, I am as well. I don't read directions and how to put things together, and then I'm cursing myself that I didn't read the directions. And yeah, it's okay. But um, th there's a lot of people who submit pictures of themselves that aren't allowed, including I do not accept if you have a wedding and you get a professional photograph. Mm. I can't take that ethically, morally, can't do it. Why? Because I don't own the rights to the image and you don't own the rights to the image. The person who took the picture owns the rights to that image. Okay. So okay. if they give us correct, like if they give us in writing permission and consent, right? This whole thing is about consent. The whole project is about consent and this, con this, a living contract that we create with each other as humans that we do or don't allow things to happen. Mm -hmm. And so I can't, I can't take those images without someone's permission and consent, right. you know? Um, so self it's tons of selfies, you know, and I think that's, that's the easiest that's, thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it, I think it's something that's very unique about this set of paintings because in history we wouldn't, have had the ability or necessarily the motivation to take selfies to make paintings with, not typically, right? Mm -hmm. um, a couple of great artists have in the past in, in their own ways, but um, like Van Eyck, one of his paintings is a selfie because it's like there's a, a mirror in the background that's round and he's reflected with his easel in it. As oh yeah, painting. I think I know what painting you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, but... Um, but like, it's not a traditional thing that you would do a selfie. So now we're seeing a, a convergence of like 
technology, how it's transformed how humans view themselves and document themselves. And you'll get to see that in a very traditional sense as paintings. Mm -hmm. So it's got it's got a lot of this like story of who we are now and like who do we want to be seen as. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, and have you been uh along with doing your work online and people seeing it, are there plans or have you been doing stuff publicly? Have you been showing your stuff or selling your stuff publicly or selling your stuff at all? Ah, oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, because while I'm painting the Garden of a Thousand Faces, the actual Garden of a Thousand Paintings portraits will be available for purchase. But first, it's available for purchase to the person who has painted. Um, and so it's like it's there's a system and a process for mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And some of the paintings have been purchased. And so the, the owner now knows, like, at one point, I'm going to ask for them back to do a gallery event, you know? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. The, my goal is to, uh, or one of my many, many goals is to um, have the Garden of a Thousand Faces displayed with all of the paintings together at one time so everyone can see them and walk through this, you know, um, event that is all of us and then i'm also collaborating and inviting other artists and creatives from all over the place to create co-create with me okay. and that is it's kind of like there's a gallery space before the garden of a thousand faces where you have all these co-created pieces with all these other artists and creatives that create things from all different types of mediums and different directions. Mm -hmm. And essentially it's like the guard, the guardians of the garden of a thousand faces, right? We're protecting each other. We're telling each other that we love each other, that we're valuable, that we cherish one another and that the work that we do is not better or worse. It is all apart. Okay. So, um, it's very multidimensional. <laughs> okay. And, and so this I've is a got plan a, that you have. This hasn't been actually, this isn't something that you're actually doing publicly right now. I've started actually like invite tapping oh. shoulders of artists and asking them if they no, no, want no. to. I mean the, the showing it publicly. Oh, so I will in the spring, we'll have our very first gallery event and it'll be a preview because not all thousands are going to be done by then. Okay. I was curious. But all right. Yeah, it'll be like a peek behind the garden wall. You get to like see what's going on and get to see the very first um, paintings and how they have changed from what you saw that very uh, like abstracted version to something where this you know exactly what that is, no matter who yeah. you are, you know. Um, and who knows with this, with artists, you never know uh, how your style may change. I don't ever feel like I have to paint in one way, you know? Mm -hmm. and so I've done different things like painted only in red light or, oh, cool. uh, and this is one of them. So you can see it looks different, but. And the different sizes interest me too. Like that's another one where it's, very small. And then the one you have, the other painting yeah. that you have that it's just different sizes. Do you have reasons behind the size that you use? Um, I started out really small because I, at one point was, uh, a teacher of math. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not really a great mathematician, but I'm not I'm, either. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to start didn't, quizzing you. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think it all the way through, but I was like, okay, I could do a thousand of these little ones, you know, like, uh, okay, that's cool. And there's this thing out there called the hundred heads challenge that a lot of artists are aware of. And it's very famous and popular. And oh. I apologize that I don't have the name of the artist who started it, but they took images and I'm not sure where they sourced the images from, but I don't think that they owned them there. I think they were like Pinterest images that they pulled or something. Gotcha. I could be wrong, but, um, they did a hundred faces and, and they're all kind of small like that. So I was kind of thinking, how could I do this and be realistic about it? But then I got excited and was like, we're not doing anything realistic. We're not doing anything small. And a big part of this was because of my mental health was like a 30 day challenge or a 100 day challenge 
is great, but after a hundred days or a hundred faces, what do I do? Mm-hmm. And at that point I was very, um, I didn't want to live. So I was very much at the end of possibilities and I was like kind of losing hope in, in humanity and in life in general. And I thought like a hundred, I'll be dead in two months or whatever, three months, you know, I didn't do good at math, but, (laughs) but we, we know it exists. Um, but you know, like three or four months and I'd be done. And then what, and then what I would do with my life. Mm -hmm. And so I really needed a life purpose and I needed something that would ground me to this planet and give me, I didn't have my students to wake up to every day to get up and go to, right? Like that was kind of when I was a teacher, the thing that kept me going, that Mm -hmm. kept me getting up. And so I had to create something that kept me getting up and kept me wanting to be healthy and wanting to uh, create. And so um, that's where this comes from. That's why it's a thousand instead of hundred, right? Well, and that's the thing I, I do. There are different challenges every year and I see those all the time and I appreciate them. I appreciate the people that are really in doing them every year, but that's the thing is you don't only have to do those challenges. One, there are many challenges that people can choose from. So they're all over the place. Yeah. I mean, there's even songwriting ones where uh, it's called RPM in the month of February, you're supposed to write a song a day. To me, that is uh I can't, I, I can't focus. I can't imagine. I can't do it that quickly. I can't do it that quickly. It's like, no, I'm, uh, so that's just but perfectionist. there are so anyway. many people out there who don't know what they're capable of because they just haven't pushed themselves yet. And that's the beauty of those challenges because they give people motivation and purpose. Some people are like, I just don't know what to draw. Or they do one thing okay. and then it's few and far between when they do another because there's nothing pushing them to do it. So it also yeah. gets people motivated to, act. And actually, if you wanted to do something as a career, you do have to do it many times. Not, not all, everything is going to go like I drew a picture and made a million dollars, you know, <laughs> it's, but if you're drawing every day, there's more of a chance that it will get found and, uh, and people will notice it and it gets you in the habit. And that's the thing is when the challenge is over, people can continue to do exactly what that challenge said and set out to do. And they can continue to keep drawing. It's just not part of a hashtag, but yeah, then people are their it. own hashtag. Now people have their own. And I think that's the point behind them is it's like after a month you can go, Hey, I have a nice little body of work here. Why don't I start doing something with this? And that, that's, and I appreciate it for that as well. But yeah, it's sometimes it's also like, you know, it's, it, it doesn't have to end. It doesn't have right. to, you don't right. have to it stop. It doesn't, it doesn't. So you're correct. And I didn't have that viewpoint. I didn't have this conversation at that point in my life to guide me, you know, mm-hmm. to remind me that like, it's okay to do a bunch of little things or something. Yeah. But at that point I felt very much, and maybe this is just my personality and whatnot, but I've always been, Oh, it's probably because I was born in Texas. Bigger. <laughs> Everything bigger. Okay. Everything bigger and okay. not not necessarily better, but everything bigger and more extreme. Isn't and that more just a plot line to a Flintstones cartoon that everything's bigger in Texas or something? <laughs> but it's so it's not even a lie, okay? okay? Things in Texas are bigger and um I I yeah, we can talk about that another time, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Every time I go back, it's driving on their highways. Have you seen their like? I've actually never been to Texas. It's one of the few places I haven't been. Oh my gosh. Well, if you go get someone else to drive for you, (laughs) that's all. Everyone drives like a hundred miles an hour on their their, uh, highways and they're very comfortable with it. So it's very different. So aside from this big project that you have planned for the spring, you were saying, uh, mm-hmm. Are there any other upcoming shows or events even online that you're doing that you'd like to tell people about before we go? Oh, um, so I'll be at the Goodman Center. They're having the Crafty Fair. It's their annual holidays event. And yes. that'll be this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Oh, that's this Sunday. weekend already? Okay. Third, I know. And then on, I have my calendar here. On December 8th, 
I'll be at the Four Winds Farm Winter Market, and this is their first one ever. It's in Fitchburg, so, and that one you do have to purchase tickets ahead of time, but uh, I have links and everything that I can give you. But uh, those are two holiday markets, and the next year I will be limiting markets and in-person events so that I can focus again on painting the garden. Okay. So I'll be live streaming and you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitch and YouTube, <laughs> like all over all the places and uh, hang out with me and paint. And do you do all those simultaneously or at different times? Um, I go live on TikTok and on Twitch. Okay. So those ones you can like hang out with me. But if you're, if you're not able or willing to get TikTok, then a lot of people like Twitch in another sense. And then for people that want to see those things, what would be the handle that they should look for? Um, they can search up hashtag green goodies. You're talking about everyone's got a hashtag um, or else hashtag garden of a thousand faces, just like garden of 1000 faces, the number. Mm -hmm. And both of those are really good ways to find me online. And then on Instagram, what would your handle be there? Uh, I am on Instagram. My name is green goodies gives, and you can also type in the hashtags green goodies or garden of 1000 faces. And I've never that. done a hashtag of myself. I should do that. Garden. That's, that <laughs> should. was one of the things that I started when I very first started posting videos. I just had noticed some other people doing it and was like, okay. And so I tried it and I have millions of hits on my hashtag. All so right. It's something sold. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. And then people can like, when they're on your podcast, they can hashtag whatever yours is that you start up. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. This was great. Thank you so much. I had a great time.